Good afternoon, everyone. Let's try that again. Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you're here. I'm Pastor Jeff Johnson. This is, I believe, it is the fourth, is it the fourth? The fourth Lenten lunch, and we're so happy that you're here because um, I, the last Lenten lunch was uh, literally days before the lockdown in 2020, and we're just so happy to see you. Um, I'm thrilled the pastor's aide um, um, has come back to make um, delicious lunches for us, so big hand to them. Um, we're very honored and blessed by that. In fact, we have now a really, um, it sounds like successful to go <laughs> ministry with it too. So I think there are easily 15 to go meals today. So if you want to go for yourself, please see them afterwards um, if there's stuff left. Um, but we, we'd love for you to do that or order before you get here because it all goes, believe it or not, to a great cause. Um, Today we have Mr. John Buckley. Um, he is, I'm gonna let him introduce exactly what he does because I will mess it up. It has to do with deeds, <laughs> indeed with Ply Plymouth County. And he has got cool historic stuff. Um, a couple announcements about First Lutheran though. Everybody has a flyer that looks like that at his or her table. And what we're about to kick off on Thursday, April 21st of next month is a kickoff concert to restore our 129-year-old Steinway. Um, it's actually um, older than the actual church building, and but we're looking to restore it and because it's become a real piece of worship life for us as well as concert life for us. Um, um, joining us that night will be internationally renowned organist, and I can say those words, David Briggs, who is the organist emeritus at Gloucester Cathedral in, um, in England, and he is the current artist in residence at St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City. He is an amazing musician, not to be missed. And he's gonna play both the organ, our wonderful organ, and the piano that desperately needs to be restored. Um, and he's gonna improvise on the piano, which is, uh, needs to be seen. But it's a piece of restoring that instrument, and I won't um, mislead you, that's gonna be an expensive venture, but we're going, to, we're going to do it. So please join us that evening. It is live streamed also. And with really, uh, we're have, having a videographer come in to do that, so it'll be wonderful. Next week for this luncheon, it will be Dr. Stephen Young, who is the direct uh, minister of music and cantor here at First Lutheran. He is gonna do a presentation on um, women composers for Women's Month. Uh, in April, he is a professor of music at Bridgewater State University. It is not to be missed. He is an amazing musician. Um, and, um, and that's our next to last um, event. And I think, do we have any um, announcements from the community? Nina, do we have anything? Anybody? Um, we're just so happy you're here. Bring a friend. Um, and finally, um, let us um, have grace. <coughs> Gracious Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and the beginnings of spring. Thank you for all good gifts because all good gifts come from you. We thank you especially today for our speaker and the things that he will have to bring to us, his gifts to the community. We thank you for the meal that was prepared for us, the hearts and the hands that prepared it. Um, be with us as we go out our own ways and keep us mindful of the needs of others. All this we ask in your name that is holy. Amen. And now, Mr. John Buckley. Thank you, Reverend. It's great to be back in the neighborhood. Uh, for many years, I practiced law in the building next door, along with a fellow by the name of uh, John McCluskey, who's still practicing, and Jack Units, who one day decided to run for mayor, and he served as the longest mayor in the city of Brockton's history. And also, my son went to kindergarten here when I was working over there. He's a graduate of Children's Ark. Um, and in, in the prayers he learned there, he shocked my uncle, who's, who's a retired priest, that one Thanksgiving with a Lutheran pr prayer. And so where did he hear that before? Uh, he went on to be trained by the Jesuits, went to Fordham and is a CPA in New York. So he had some great training here at kindergarten. 
Uh, so I am the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. It's an elective office. And I've been elected now for four terms. I'm in the middle of my fourth term. And what we are responsible for is all land records within Plymouth County. So Plymouth County includes 27 communities. It goes from here in Brockton in the northwest down to Mattapoisett in the southwest over to Plymouth and all the way up to Hingham and Hull in the northeast. Every deed, mortgage, anything related to real estate gets recorded with us. And um, it's a very important role we play because having sustainability of ownership in your land records, in your land ownership, is something that is, uh, for most people, their most valuable asset. Um, we've done a lot of modernization over the years. Um, every single one of our do documents you can now find searchable over our website, PlymouthDeeds.org. Um, goes all the way back not only to the founding of Plymouth County, which was 1685, but also including the original deeds from Plymouth Colony. Plymouth Colony was founded when the Mayflower arrived in Plymouth and set up, set up a settlement for the colony. Uh, they weren't aiming for Plymouth. They were aiming for a little bit north of Manhattan, but because of the wind and the shoals drove them into Provincetown Harbor, they then found a site uh, which became Plymouth Harbor. Uh, so, so there's a lot of great history involved in what I do. Um, over the past probably four or five years, we were very involved in a project that celebrated the 400th anniversary of Plymouth Colony. Um, there's an organization called Plymouth 400 that I played a part in. Um, and uh, if you go to our website, we have a video that is on the website that talks about all of the accomplishments of the original colonists. A lot of people don't remember. They think about the first Thanksgiving, but they don't realize that it was a Plymouth colonist that first invented the trial by jury abroad, the trial by jury to America, uh, the first ferry in America, um, uh, the, the ability to privately own property in America when the colonists first arrived in 1620, everything was common property. And because uh, there were some slackers at the time, <laughs> and they were taking advantage of others' work, they said, all right, you own your own property. They granted them land and production increased and it, it took them out of what was called a starving time because um, it was a very tough environment when they arrived. The first winter they arrived, they arrived in around November of 2020. The first winter, half of them died and they had a lot of struggles over the year down there uh, the Native American uh, organizations back then, the Wapanoag uh, community, helped them through those times, taught them how to fish and plant, and it was a very symbiotic relationship. <clears throat> that fell apart years later when there was a King Philip's War. The natives got very, all related to land, got very tired of the colonists taking land for, for for private use, and the natives' idea of land was always everyone used it together, and there was a war that decimated a lot of people. There's a great book, if you haven't read it, by Nathaniel Philbrick called Mayflower that talks about those stories and talks about the land that we walk on every day. Um, so that's been the, the really fun part of my job. You know, I knew going into it, having practiced law and real estate, the role of the register is primarily to make sure documents get recorded, things that shouldn't get recorded get rejected, and above all else, that is preserved so you uh, protect the chain of title of private ownership. And one of the things that we do as a registry is take in the documents, um, record the, the documents, the deeds, the mortgage, but we also have to create a very fine index, because it's one thing to have millions of documents. If 
you can't find them, they're not much good to you. So a system is built on a system of grantor, grantee, uh, land records. Grantor is when you tr transfer land. Grantee is when you're the recipient of the land, and that's how you can search uh, records. Um, for any historians here, in the, we run a um, monthly trading session down in Plymouth. Um, if you work for your town historical commission or even for your own property, we're going to be starting that up again. Uh, we're coming out of a few tough years of COVID. Um, we never shut down because you certainly can't shut down real estate. Um, we did a lot of modifications of, of, at first, working from home on computers, um, uh, gradually opening up, not to the public. We're fully operational now. And I, I think, um, surprising to me, um, during the real COVID year, 2021, was the highest number of documents recorded since 2005. That was a, a surprise to me and a real fasc fascinating experience. So again, because we have our land records all the way back to the beginning of the colony and the county, people can search their records over the internet. Uh, a number of years ago, so we, we developed the ability to record documents over the internet. If you're an authorized entity, like attorneys and banks and others that uh, do business by recording documents, you can now record your documents over the internet. About 80% of our recorded land documents come in over the internet now. And about, there's two sides of the registry, the, the land court side, land that was adjudicated by a judge along the way, comes in at about 60%. So during the COVID restrictions, that was an incredible help to have that as a tool. Uh, we're continuing to modernize the registry. That's certainly the main function of my role. And um, as we go forward, we do a lot of outreach. I do a monthly cable show with Brockton Cable Access. We do a monthly radio interview and we get out to groups uh, to tell them all about us and how you can search your records and how important it is to make sure that you pay attention to your records. Clearly, as an asset, your land records are something people want to take away from you. There are a lot of scammers out there. There's two scams I'm going to mention to you today. One is there's this company, and you'll probably see it coming in the mail, that'll offer to get you a copy of your deed for like $50, $60, $70, and it frustrates me to no end when, when we get those requests coming in uh, for that company, because you can go to one of our offices and get a copy of your deed, which I advise you to do, for a dollar a page. We have three offices. Our main office is in Plymouth, um, on Oberry Street next to the trial court. We have a Brockton satellite office not too far from here, immediately adjacent to the uh, Superior Court on Belmont Street. The 32 Belmont Street office is ours, and we have a satellite office over in Rockland in the AAA Plaza. So I advise you as part of your estate plan to get a copy of your deed. It's a good, it's a good thing to have. But I also want to tell people, if you've paid off your mortgage, a lot of people think that the lender always sends that to us. Be very careful because many times they send it out to you and if you're just getting it and stick it in your drawer, there's still a lien on your property. So you, you really want to pay attention to that kind of thing. And, and there's another thing, there's a lot of scamming going on. As I started to say, people take advantage not only of uh, high cost deeds, but also trying to put things on your title that you never intended for them to do. So we offer a free fraud alert. If you go to our website, again, PlymouthDeeds.org, and sign up for the fraud alert, just put your name and your email in there. Anything recorded against your ownership, against your property, you'll get an email, and you will know whether you're refinanced or whether it's could be a scam and you could pay more attention to it. 
So that is generally an overview. We do focus a lot um, in our cable shows and our discussions about notable land records, land records that tell a story. Um, I brought a couple of them here with me today. Uh, one is um, the only congressman elected, uh, or the last congressman elected from Plymouth County lived in West Bridgewater. Okay. So Hastings Keith um, lived in West Bridgewater. He was a, it's a well-known name as a Keith, uh, with the first. Uh, it's also Keith Park. Uh, Keith was the first minister when, when Bridgewater broke off from the Plymouth Colony and established its own town. Uh, Bridgewater later was developed into many parishes. Uh, the North Parish of Bridgewater, um, and the priest was, was a Reverend Keith, but that is, the parish of North Bridgewater became the town of North Bridgewater and is now the city of Brockton. So that is a very important family around here. But Hastings Keith was a congressman during the time of a, of a cranberry scare. There's a lot of cranberry bugs here in Plymouth County and they were try trying to say that the chemicals used for cranberries um, cause cancer. And of course, everyone was staying away from cranberries. He had a federal study done that showed that it was not true. And that's why we have ocean spray and things like that today. He also represented West Bridgewater all the way to Cape Cod. And he was one of the founding persons of the Cape Cod National Seashore. So he was quite a quite a, a famous figure. I also did a notable record with a group from nearby Keith Park, and maybe I'll just show you that one. Keith Park is right up at the corner of Plain Street and Main Street. They did a nice job renovating it a few years ago. And um, obviously, in a city like Brockton, it's nice to have open space that people can visit. And, and last but not least, we have about a hundred of them. Uh, we also did one for Rocky Marciano. Everyone who lives in Brockton or knows anything about sports knows about Rocky Marciano. It's his boyhood home um, when he was fighting on Dover Street. Uh, and I'm working with the homeowner, uh, the, mayor, the mayor of Brockton, Bob Sullivan, and the Brockton Historical Society in an effort to try to get that listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So stay, stay tuned on that. So with that as an overview, the Reverend suggested that I open it up for questions, which I certainly can do. I, I was told not to overstay my welcome, but, <laughs> but, I, but I've always enjoyed coming here. When I was the mayor's assistant at City Hall, there was a fellow who was a member of this parish who was the um, economic development person for the city, a fellow by the name of Harold Olson. So every, every Lenten season, Harold would bring me along with him to come to one of your luncheons. And, and several years ago, I had the great benefit to be a friend of Jim Benson. And, and Jim Benson was obviously very involved in researching records with me, a, a great person that le has left quite a legacy, but I was also a guest of his and a best speaker be guest speaker before. So I always enjoy what you do. I think it's a great tradition, and I'm very happy to be here. But I'll be happy to take any questions. Hi, question. uh, Chris Newman, please. Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I would like to research my house. Sure. So is it better to do it online? What? Well, you, you might want to start by, by going to one of our sites. In Brockton, do you, where do you live? Where? where? I'm sorry? Okay, yes, you're closer to go to the Brockton site. There's park, free parking. Uh, you walk right in. There, it is closed 12 to 1, but 
they definitely will get you started. So you probably start with your own deed, and then you'll, most deeds have the reference on the bottom of the previous deed, and you could do a lot of that work from home because it's all available. Now, there may be some gaps in, the, in, in the, um, our records because there might have been a probate in between, and the transfer would come from probate, but they'll be able to give you some ideas about how to proceed. Oh, great. Sure. Give me, give me your information before you leave. I'll make, yeah. Yeah, and I went, to, I went over and spoke at your anniversary a couple of weeks ago. It's a very important time to celebrate. Thank you very much. Right. Next, anybody else have a question? Uh, I have a question. Sure. Well, when, when, when you take a property as an individual deed, uh, it is granted by someone else, you are the grantee of that sale, but usually most people, when they buy property, buy it with a mortgage. So the mortgage gets recorded at the same time as the sale. And when you have paid that mortgage off, if you're lucky to pay that mortgage off, th there should be a discharge issued by the lender to show that you've met and satisfied your obligation. That document should be recorded at the Registry of Deeds at, as soon as you can after it's paid off. Because other than that, that mortgage is still listed as a lien on your property. And you need to pay attention to that. Many, again, many times the lender will send it in to us. Many times they send it to you. And people think, oh, it's great. I got notice that I paid off my mortgage. But that discharge that you received has to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. And make sure you do that. We've had problems over the years when people didn't pay attention to that, and there was a time when banks were failing, and so you couldn't really even get a discharge. So they changed a law that allowed you to do a certificate that showed it was paid off, but it's way more complicated than just taking the discharge and recording it. Does it actually say discharge? It should say discharge on the top. So if it's up there, Well, yeah, I would make sure to call your lender and say, did you record my discharge after you pay off your mortgage? Well, 20 years ago, so, you know, well, 20 years ago, I did exactly what it said. So you're going to hold I always tell people we have a very customer-friendly operation. It wouldn't hurt to go to one of our offices. Hey, say, I, I want to come in. I want to get a copy of my deed, pay the dollar, maybe $2. Do you mind looking at my title and see whether my discharge was recorded? It's, not, it's an easy thing to do, smart thing to do. Everyone does wills. They do, you know, the power of attorneys. They do, you know, um, life estate, all that, you know, all those different options. But for this... It's good to have in your estate package a copy of your deed and certainty of knowing if you paid off your mortgage, the discharge has been recorded. Good yeah. That would apply to also the second mortgage, right? Two mortgages. Yeah, and a second mortgage is still a lien on your property, so you still have to have that discharged. So, so I heard somebody say you're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the church? Uh, the church building. Building, okay. Yes. And, the, and the land was owned before that? Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is Ian, Ian Beauregard and I will offer to try to find that deed and get you a copy of it. Uh, Chris Newman is in charge of that. Oh, okay, Chris. Oh, you and I will work on it. love to see that. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that'd be a fun little thing to do. Okay, well, yeah. So th I'm just talking about what we would have is, is the D. So if, it, if there are no other questions, yes. Janet Trask. <laughs> I, I think um, you'd have to actually go back and look at the deeds, but just because there was a deed for the land doesn't mean there was even a house on it. Many times the deed will say the land and the buildings there with. Um, so I'd really have to look at each, each one of those. I've also heard the one. Um, There's one over down on Main Street, I think. Really? Yeah. My, my home... Right, 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 exactly. My, my home, I live on, on, on Rockland Street. My home is circa 1789 is what they call it. It's an old farmhouse that later became White's Nursery up on, and now is a, my, our home for 30 years. Yeah. Old homes are tough to take care of. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Um, as someone whose spouse has passed, the house is my name is put on the house before he passed, and then he passed shortly after. His name is still on the deed, but it is a registered death certificate. At what point do you have to take his name out? Um, you really don't until you sell the property. Okay, that's what I assumed, yeah. but I wanted right. to. Right. So, so people that take property as husband and wife, take it as husband and wife, tenants in the entirety. And, and when the, one of the spouses die, you, you should record the death certificate. But when you sell the property, um, it'll be fr from you and, fr and from your, your name and your husband who is deceased will be on the deed. And that'll, and that'll, that'll transfer, the, because once a tenant's in the entirety or joint tenants, once someone dies, the entire interest goes to that remaining individual. But it still will be listed will be listed on the deed as long as you have the death certificate recorded. It'll, yeah. No, that that is the correct answer. We, we, we get that question a lot. Right. So thank you all very much. One more question. One more question. I have a time limit here, you know. <laughs> Starting to tick up again. Yeah, so during, and one of the things about having been in the position for the period I was, I was there during the years 2003 and 2004 when everyone refinanced because the rates were low back then, three, four, even five times. Um, then we ran into an a, a economic problem and a lot of the properties at that time, went what they call underwater. The mortgages were higher than the values of the property, and a lot of people lost their homes. So we worked with NeighborWorks, a um, nonprofit that works in housing and tries to keep people in their homes, and we sent them a, a document called a, a notice of foreclosure that gets recorded at the registry. So all, whenever a notice was recorded with us, we sent copies of it to NeighborWorks because in the foreclosure process, the first document that gets recorded to Registry of Deeds is a notice of foreclosure. The second one is the foreclosure deed when the lender has actually taken back title. But there's a period of time between the notice of foreclosure and the foreclosure deed that you might be able to work out a modification for people I remember during that time period when there were foreclosure conferences. I remember one over at the old Christos. There were 800 people in line that were facing trouble. 
another, another one over at the unknown school, and it, people were all the way out the door into the parking lot because everyone was facing those problems. We're in a little better shape right now, even though a lot of people have paid a lot of money for properties. When you see people paying $800 for three decades on Warren Ave, you know people are paying a high amount of money. But the difference now is the values are so high that they're higher than the mortgages. So I expect it to be a better time. But if anyone you know has having any trouble paying their mortgage, get involved in it right away. Call NeighborWorks, get them on your team to try to help you get some kind of a modification. And so, Dick was very involved at that time. And what, I'm sorry? Dick. Yeah, Bick. Was very yeah, Bro Brockton, Brockton Interfaith. I remember I had a meeting that I was part of, and Con Congressman Bonnie Frank, who was the chairman of the banking committee, was in, at St. Patrick's, and there were probably 800 people in that in that building. And so Bick really played a big part in it. Bick's moved on to other things for the most part, but they, they, I'm sure they'll be back again if we get to a crisis. Yeah. So thank you all for having me here once again.